I had it out recently specifically for this video. Yeah. Um, look at this. This is a book I wrote when I was about maybe 11, 12 years old. I don't remember. Somewhere around the time. Why do we call it Heaven Hill? Because for those of you who know me, I'm a writer. I've always written books as a child. I wrote little paper books, all kind of stuff. And yeah. I really wrote a poem about going to hell. It's raining outside and God is safe and dry. That is odd. I don't know why I wrote that, but whatever. Look at this. Why'd you say God's name in vain? Now go out in the pouring rain. And look at what I drew. See, of course, my mom, like other Christians, had this big thing. Don't say God's name in vain. Don't say, oh God, or oh my God, or anything of the sort. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I was deathly afraid of saying something like that. Because I was taught that if I say God's name in vain, hell was where I was going to be living. So I wrote a book about it. I was, this, this is, it's not cute, y'all. This is, this is paranoia for a child to go through. God's frowning at you more than that. He's sending you to hell. That is that. So the mom takes the boy and she leads him to the doors of hell, I guess. I don't know what stuff was in my mind, but y'all, this is literally my fear coming out on paper. You see this shit? Don't say so because he's right and it won't be a pleasant sight. So the mom is kicking her own son out because he said God's name in vain. And apparently he didn't deserve to fucking live. <sighs> see, dying is not my thing. You won't even see an angel's wing. So that means he's gonna be in hell and dead and no angels are gonna save him. Because God loved him so much that just because he said his name in vain, he gets sent to the devil. Next morning, look where the boy is going. And I drew this weird picture. Heaven and hell. The girl and the daughter, I mean, uh, the mom and daughter, going to heaven and the boy is burning for all eternity. The end. Alright, now, that uh, wasn't that a close, that was a close little story, wasn't it, y'all? Tell me, tell me. That, that was something. As you can see, my name, I wrote my name on here. You can see my maiden name. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm showing you this because I really want to get through to you guys on how much, how bad the damage to a child is when they hear this stuff. This is not funny. This is not even cute. I mean, yeah, it's cute because I drew it and I put it together, but the, the premise is not cute. I have seen other people online come forth with stories like this or you know similar situations where they were spiritually abused so bad they were shaking in their boots for their life every day and this was before my molestation this is practically before probably before um my father did what he did to me as far as you know the sexual abuse So if this is before the abuse, imagine how much trauma I really had going on in my head. I had to be a goody two shoes. Or else God was gonna freaking kill me. I had to be a goody two shoes or my mom was gonna escort me straight to hell as she put it. You know, I love you, as she would say always say, oh, I love you, but I'll send you there myself if I have to. That type of stuff. You guys as parents, you don't need to do that to your child. Stop scaring your child. This is ridiculous. This this is bullshit. Whether you believe in heaven and hell or not, this is bullshit. No child should be walking around being afraid of this stuff. And my mom literally thought this book was cute when I showed it to her. I'm sure she did. I remember her. She didn't say anything about it. She was like, oh, okay, cool. Good, wonderful. You go into the book. See, like I said, boomers 
The baby boomer generation probably were not aware of half the shit they were doing, but they really damaged us. They really damaged this current generation. You know, 80s kids, 80s babies, 90s kids, all of us. We're all fucked up if we were, if we were wrapped up in the uh, religion thing as kids and then we came out of it. <sighs> See, I shed that shit a long time ago and I shed it for a reason. And this book is part of the reason why I shed it because I grew up with so much goddamn fear over saying the word goddamn. <laughs> I grew up with so much fear that God didn't love me enough to give me a second chance even after I obeyed him. I mean disobeyed him. Oh yeah, everyone sins every now and then, but you know, still, what's hell for? If it was just as easy as you repent and pray and you get it taken off you, what's the point of hell? What's the point of hell existing? See, as a child, you are putting these stories into your head. You are patronizing your child over the creator that you believe in. And if you believe in a creator that's going to send you to hell, that you believe is truly going to send you to a fiery pit, truly going to send your child to a fiery pit, then I'm telling you, you're following, following the wrong cult. I'm just being honest. I mean, that's... <laughs> I'm just being freaking honest here. Like, you're following the wrong thing. And I say cult because it is a cult. I don't care. They're all cults. The Christians, the Muslims, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Baptists, Pentecostal. I don't care what you call yourself. Even the freaking Hebrews. The Israelite Hebrews. That I come across a good amount of those. And they are just as brainwashed as the Christians that they make fun of. Come on, you guys are not really that different. There's not really much differences within these factions. Yet everybody fights and fusses and in the, in the result, everybody saying, no, you're going to hell, no, you're going to hell. You need to follow this, follow that, follow this, follow that. And people just fighting each other for no reason for y'all to all supposedly end up in hell. What is the point? Don't get your child wrapped up in that bullshit because it really messed me up, y'all. And I was already a really good kid. I was a really good kid in the first place. I didn't get into trouble. I I, I was never a troublemaker. <sighs> Religion came along, y'all, and it messed me up. It messed me up psychologically. Then I thought I had to be more good. So I was definitely striving to be good so I wouldn't go to hell. I would never want to go to hell. But imagine growing up with that. Yo, some of y'all probably already know. You probably already have. This is spiritual abuse, y'all. This is not a this is not a fake thing I'm talking about. This actually exists. These things happen. Many, many people out there who have been victims of this. And some of you guys have problems today up until your adulthood because you've been spiritually abused. Yeah, it might have been a bit physical, but guess what? Not all abuse is physical, you know? It's just not. Some is emotional, some is mental, some is sexual, as we know. And some is also psychological and spiritual. It all, it all ties in. There is such a thing. All of this, hey, it is what it is. That's just the unfortunate truth. So I hope you guys really give that, I mean, give this um, some thought because, like I said, it's a growing trend out there. People are really coming out with their stories and they're, they're just talking about all kind of horrible stuff that happened to them as a child. All the bullshit their parents put them through saying, oh, well, you better do this for God. You better do that for God. And I'm sure there are way worse stories than mine. I'm sure there are way worse stories out there because I've heard them. There are some parents who were real crazy, kind of like that movie, uh, Carrie. You guys see Carrie? Stephen King's Carrie, that, that horror movie with the girl with the loony mother. Um, so people are literally that crazy as far as spiritual abuse. Spiritual abuse. They're literally that scary. I mean, that, um cuckoo they're just gone you know there are people literally like that it's not even a joke that movie was literally not a joke and look how she look how the poor girl grew up look what happened to her <laughs> I mean these things are real don't make the same mistakes I'm not saying that everybody's gonna come out you know being all extra cuckoo and being all extra paranoid but for the most part it does make you paranoid it does put fear in your head it doesn't belong there it puts fear in your subconscious whether it's forefront in your mind at the time or not, it's always stored in your subconscious. Your subconscious stores a lot of things, y'all. 
and you might be making decisions right now where you're not realizing why can't I stop making these certain decisions I just can't put my finger on it but it could have been something else put there as a child that's just that's just sitting back there aching at you and you don't even realize where it came from but it might have come from church it might have come from somebody that told you something regarding religion and you know you better not do it or else you're going to hell <laughs> you know just you know a lot of things get stored in our heads that we don't remember <sighs> just pay attention to that and do not make the same mistakes my parents definitely did this and was my mother my dad didn't really believe any of the stuff he was really not a diehard Christian ever um I don't blame him. I think he saw the fallacy in it from the get-go. My mother tried to get him to go to church for many, 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 many years, but he barely ever went. He only went on special occasions when he just felt like it. Oh, she begged it, begged it out of him enough. But for the most part, he did not really care at all. You know, even though he was raised a Christian, he still didn't really care. But my mom was the one who deathly scared me into the heaven and hell thing. Deathly. So, it's just now that I'm coming to realize sometimes my anxiety, um, a lot of my anxiety might be tied to religious based things and sometimes you gotta really pick your brain apart, you gotta really figure out why you do certain things. It helps y'all, self reflection helps, it helps a lot. So yeah, I hope you guys have learned something, I hope you guys will think about this. Um, I hope you guys are not victims of spiritual abuse, but chances are more than likely you are. Please don't do the same thing to your child if you can help it. Do your best. Don't follow generational patterns. Break those generational curses because they literally are generational curses. Spiritual abuse is a generational curse. You pay, be passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down. People can't even live their lives properly because of religion. And that's just the truth. They literally cannot live their lives properly because they're so, so scared of disappointing this, this being because of what they were told. Please don't be that close-minded. Come on, go live your life. If you do something, do it because you feel like it. And if your conscience gets to you, then it'll get to you on its own. But don't be scared of going into some fiery pit. Oh, I don't even believe that. Just think. Think for yourself. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> think for yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Again, I hope you guys learned something. I gave you some, lots of food for thought. I hope you think about it and make your own decisions and conclusions. Write in the comments below what you think, what you believe. Anything, any comments are welcome. Just don't be mean, of course. Do not be rude. I'm going to block your ass. And let's have a nice discussion, you know? Um, yeah, that's just about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a great day, second hour, month, minute, and, and, and week. <laughs> Thank you for watching, your family. Peace out.